Okay, boys and girls, today we are going to be talking about one of my favorite subjects, and that is knives. And today we are looking at the best mid-range knives so far, starting out 2022. Now, this list I'm going to try to keep up to date and pretty current, and as the channel or as time goes on, I will continue to update this list. But so far, I wanted to talk about, in my collection, some of the best best wilderness mid-range or mid-tier blades. Now, I talk about a lot of expensive and a lot of budget knives on this channel, but I don't feel like I give these mid-tier blades enough time, so that is exactly what we're going to do today. Talk about blades that range anywhere from $100 to under $200. I think the closest knife here to $200 is probably the A1. It comes in about $180, $170, depending on where you get it and when. So these are all firmly under 100 or firmly under $200, but usually firmly above 100 So that's kind of mid-tier to me, and this is honestly where a lot of people, if you get a little bit more experience in knives, if you get a little bit more custom to blades, this is where a lot of people end up moving. There's good performance, good quality, and going past this point in blades, you should be spending a lot more to get real improvements. Okay, so as per usual, we're going to go from smallest to tallest, and we're going to start off with the good old SE3. Now, there are quite a few SEs on this list, but the SE3 is really unique in the fact that it is a small, very thin, very slicey outdoor blade, but at the same time, because this is an SC, it is also very durable. I have tried to break this knife on several occasions, truly tried to break it, and it does not break, it does not budge, so while the not everyone is the largest fan of the heat treat, and the heat treat on SEs is usually a little bit softer. It is made up for it having an extremely durable blade. And I would rather have a blade that bends and doesn't break out in the woods as opposed to one that breaks, because in the field, I can fix a bent blade, I can't fix a broken blade. So that is the SE3. Like I said, it is a very slicey blade, and overall, it is a pretty fantastic knife if you're looking for something a little bit smaller for wilderness use. Now, stepping it up a little bit more, we have the LT Right Legome. Now, this blade admittedly is not the easiest to find, but I wanted to throw it on the list because this one is about $160, and I will include the link in the description below to where you can buy these. If they are in stock, they do make runs of them periodically, but the Legome is really specifically a tailored knife for bushcrafting, and it does bushcrafting tasks extremely well. And of course, it was co-designed by the late Morris Kohansky and has just a lot of experience, wilderness experience, put into this blade. So I can't say enough good things about it. It is very simple and very basic looking in comparison to some of these other maybe more wild designs, but it is an extremely effective design. It's made out of 01 tool steel, eighth of an inch thick, and is very durable, very overall uh, a very useful blade. And mine, of course, it has a blue blade because uh, I want it to look a little bit different and be, of course, a little bit more resilient to moisture. So that is the Lego with orange handle as well. So now let's jump over into the Falcon Even F1. Now this is one that has been around the world or around the bushcraft and knife community for a very long time. It is kind of touted as a pilot survival knife and over all just a general purpose survival knife now i think it might be in my opinion a little bit too small for survival as these are more the size of a strict survival knife that i think of but the falcon even f1 is still a very excellent blade and it is a pretty robust thick knife that tapers down very well due to a full convex grind and it is a very slicey and overall a pretty effective knife. Now it is a convex grind so it's not my absolute favorite for grinds but the blade itself is very excellent and I do like the thermo run handle because it is very grippy and very temperature neutral so in climates and in times like we're in right now winter uh, this blade performs very well and stays very temperature neutral so overall a really fantastic blade of course it is full tank 
but it is awesome. So definitely would recommend checking out any of Falcon Even's products. As you'll probably see, there will be more Falcon Even knives rolled into the integration. But for now, just the F1 and A1. Okay, so now jumping over to the SE4. Now the SE4 is a bigger brother to the SE3. Obviously, it has a lot of the same design characteristics, but essentially it is just a beefed up version. It borrows the same thickness as the XC6, and so you can see that it is quite a bit thicker than the SE3. It's actually a pretty substantial jump up because the SE3 is so thin, but the SE4 really is just a more robust version of the SC3 if you're looking for something that's just a little bit longer if you're looking for something that's just a little bit longer and ultimately more robust, the SC4 is really where it's at. Now, with all these SCs, you can probably see they come in many different flavors. This SC and my SC3 both have G10 handles. This SC up here has uh, micarta, but you can get them in many different uh, styles and flavors. You can even get rounded handles, thicker handles, and these are all stock factory options. So. It's really cool to see what SC is doing. In addition, something that I do want to mention as well, uh, because it's also in the same price range, SC3s and 4s come in S CPM S35VN. So if you're looking for a little less durability, but greater rust resistance and edge retention, that's another route to go as well. So there's many different flavors and styles that you can get these classic SE shapes and blade designs in. And so that's another really cool feature about SE knives. Okay, so now jumping over to the Topps Fieldcraft, and there will probably be more Topps knives integrated into this mid-tier list later, but for now we have the good old classic Fieldcraft. And the Fieldcraft is one of those blades that is very well proven. As you can see, mine is pretty well beaten, though it is blued, once again, similar to the Lagone for rust resistance, but it is a very durable, very effective bushcrafting blade. I am not the largest fan of the jimping on the back, but aside from that, the Topps Fieldcraft has definitely proven itself, and if you're looking for, once again, a mid-sized blade that has lots of handle, especially if you have bigger hands, this is a really great blade to go for. Now for me, it has almost a little bit too much handle, but plenty of sprawl space for my hand is definitely not going to get fatigued. And having a kind of mid-thick kind of blade, it's not super thick, but about the same thickness as the SC4 and the SC6, it is plenty durable, plenty robust enough, and it also has a nice long Scandinavian grind that is slightly convex for all your cutting needs. So that is the Topps Fieldcraft. I've talked about it before, especially last year. It is still a fantastic knife, and even though I don't talk about it, every video or feature in too many videos is still definitely one that I like a lot. It is a very nice knife with a lot of character, especially mine being as abused as it is. <laughs> okay, so now going into our last two blades, the Falkneven A1 and SC6. So the A1 is essentially the bigger brother, or the biggest brother, I should say, to the F1, because there is also the S1, which is more along the size of the SC4 and a Topps Fieldcraft, but the A1 is essentially, the best way to put it is, like a upgraded version of the SRK. It really does have a lot of similarities in size, thickness, but it does of course feature Falkneven's laminated VG10 and Falkneven's well-known convex grind, but it does really look a lot like, especially the Sandmai versions of the SRK. But that is a good thing because the SRK is a really great knife, and so if you draw a lot of similarities from it, you know you're probably on the right track. Anyways, it does have the thermo run handle, of course it is full tang with that tang sticking out there. Like I said, it is a convex grind. Now this is kind of a modified convex grind because it doesn't start from the top like a lot of traditional convex grinds do. It also, unlike many convex grinds, and like I have talked about in past videos, Usually convex grinds have a very unsupported and weak tip for prying. While I wouldn't necessarily recommend prying on everything with the A1, it should fare a lot better because it has a swedge which gives you additional reinforcement to the very tip. 
So hypothetically, it does have a stronger tip for lateral or sideways movement. So hypothetically, it should be a little bit stronger, a little bit more robust, and overall, it is what I would begin to say is a real survival knife, and definitely something that I would feel very comfortable using in any kind of survival situation, especially up here. And this thing definitely looks right at home in Alaska, and that's probably largely due to the fact that it being developed, designed, and created initially in Scandinavia, though this blade is made in Japan, but this blade was designed in Scandinavia, you know, it is designed to function in environments like Alaska very well. Okay, last but certainly not least is the good old SE6. Now this blade, so this blade is just a little bit bigger than the A1. Now it does have a very similar blade length. They're both about six inches, but this forward finger choil and the larger handle of the SE6 give it just a few more inches of overall size. And this one has to be definitely one of my favorites for a general purpose, multi-roll survival knife. I think that the SE6 is very hard to beat if you are looking for a mid-tier, mid-range survival knife. This is probably what I would still end up going with. I do like the A1 a lot, and it would be a tough battle, certainly, between the A1 and the SE6, but I feel more comfortable with the SE6, and the ergonomics for me are just a little bit better. Not to mention, uh, this blade, while still very thick, it is certainly no slouch, uh, certainly not super thick, but it is much thinner than the good old A1. As you can see, the A1 is made out of a beefy stock of steel. Now, that does make it quite beefy and robust, but there is a certain extent where how much is too much. I mean, steel is a very strong material, especially these alloys designed for knife steel. You know, this SE6 will not break on you. Uh, likely, you know, in any reasonable task. So, how much is too much? I would say that the A1 is a little bit too much just because it's so much steel that genuinely this thing is a hefty blade to hold. But, that being said, the SE6 is very comfortable and a very usable blade, and overall, I really do love it. So, I've, I enjoy all these knives, but that is essentially my experience with. All of these blades, some of them of course have a little bit more use than others, but all of them are certainly rated by me, and if they fail, they would not be on the list. So these are really some of the best mid-range or mid-tier fixed blades that you can get for the outdoors, at least right now at the beginning of 2022. Now I do realize there are a lot of mid-tier blades. If your favorite mid-tier blade did make it onto the list, definitely let me know in the comment section below, and as always guys, let me know what your favorite mid-range, mid-tier bushcraft or survival or outdoor blade is. Okay, boys and girls, that's all for now. God bless, and I'm out.